this lesson you will find an answer to the most frequent question on the internet about unity. We will teach two separate scripts to communicate with each other. First of all, let's create another tag for player 2 gate. Go to Unity and in the inspector press drop down list. Choose add tag. Press on the plus button and give your new tag a name. This time it will be player 2 gate tag. Press save, select player 2 gate and choose appropriate tag. Now go back to mono develop and in our ball script find on trigger enter method. That's where we detect collisions and that's where we will check which gate was hit by using tags. There are three possible collisions that can happen. Ball hit gate 1, ball hit gate 2 and ball hit something else. Now let's think about the algorithm. If object that has been hit by ball has tag player 1 gate tag print player 2 score. Else if object that has been hit by ball has tag player 2 gate tag print player 1 score. And if ball hits something else we simply don't care. How to check which tag name has the object? By using comparison operator. Start by if triggered with dot tag now we use comparison operator, double equals sign, player1, gate, tag. Because we are comparing tag name, we should use a string. So to do that, include player1, gate, tag into double quotes. Now what do we print if ball hit player1, gate? Print player2, scored. Else if triggered with tag is player2, gate, tag, then player1, scored. This way we will know which player should receive score point. So now let's see how to actually award those points. We are in the interesting situation. Bo knows about gates it goes through. Game manager knows about player scores. How can they communicate? We should ask game manager to increase the score when our ball goes through one or another gate. The task of making two scripts attached to two separate game objects to communicate is one of the most asked Unity questions on the internet. And soon you will know how to do that. This task will be solved in several steps. First, in ball script we are going to create new variable type of a game manager. That's where we will store reference to game manager script. Second, we will establish connection from game manager script to the ball game object. Third, later we will get ball script component from the ball game object so that we can talk to it directly. And at last, we will store reference to game manager script inside variable from the ball script. Let's start with step one. In the game manager script you will notice that it's a public class called game manager, which means we can reach its instance from any script in our game. Head to the ball script and create new public game manager variable. Let's call it a game manager with non capital G. This will indicate that this instance of game manager is for use within the ball script. Right after game start, the ball is created by game manager. But if I want to delete ball afterwards, then game manager won't be able to do it, because ball's instance has no reference to it. After creating it, game manager doesn't remember about it anymore. If you run the game, you will notice that we have a clone of the ball, and that's an instance. At this moment, there is no way to communicate to it. What if right after spawning the ball, game manager could introduce itself? Let's store reference to ball instance after it is created. For this, in game manager, create new game object variable and call it ball instance. Notice that I didn't make it public because there is no need to assign it through the editor and we do not need to access it from other scripts. In this set ball method, find line where we instantiate the ball. We should get the result of this operation and store its value in our ball instance variable. To do that, use assignment operator. Before instantiate command, add ball instance equals. And that's it. Now we have our ball game object created in the scene. 
with reference to its stored in bow instance variable under game manager, which means that we have just established connection from game manager to the bow. Now, if we want, we can destroy this game object from game manager, but we still have no access to the bow's script, which we are going to get next. Congratulations, we are halfway through. But if you do not understand this part well, please watch this video once again. It's not a must to understand 100% of what's going on, but at least try to get the logic behind our actions. Good news, there is no assignment, so see you in the part B.